tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use template partials in Quarto in order to customize your PDF output. So in this case, I would like to create a PDF with a custom title page. So here's an example. This is um, it's just using the generic document class, but I don't want to use the generic title. I've got this custom title that I want to use. So that's what we're going to be doing, and that's what I'm going to show you how, how to do. I'm going to be using, as my example, this uh, GitHub repository. It's under um, NIMPS OpenSci here, and it's this one right here, Quarto Title Pages. So everything you're going to be seeing is on here. Let's start off with creating a, uh, a static title page. So first thing you need to know is the basics of how um, Quarto, I'm sorry, Pandoc templates work and how Quarto is using those. So let's go here. I'm under Quarto Dev and the Quarto CLI and you can see it's the source, the resources, and it's showing us the, the templates that Pandoc's using. If we go here, we see all the templates, and the key one we want to look at first is this template.tech. That will show you how Pandoc is assembling all these pieces that you see in this directory into your LaTeX file. So let's check this out. Um, so it's got a lot of content here. And we just kind of want to scroll down till we get to the um, uh, into the uh, begin document. In fact, I'll just search to find that. That's what we want, right? Okay. So here we are. We're at the the start of the document. And before uh, body tech, you can see that's what's included right here. And it's in the B before body tech. Um, this content that's being put in here, that's what's defining our title page. So let's go and go take a look at that. There we go. Okay. And you can see it's pr pretty simple. It's basically just calling front matter. So this should give you an idea of what you want to do to create your custom title page. Basically, you want to tell Pandoc to replace that before body tech up here. You want to replace it with your own so that instead of using front matter, which it's defining, you want to define your own. So, pretty simple. So, let's see how we do that. So, okay. I am now in the, uh, this is the Quarto title uh, title page is repo. I'm looking at this in R Studio. Um, note, however, none of this is specific to R. I'm just using R Studio to edit the files. So if you uh, use another language, all this works the same for you. So let's start with the static example. If you um, navigate through this repo, what you're going to see is title pages folder, and that is giving you these examples. So we're going to start off with static. What does static mean? It, in this case, what it's doing is it's using a static title page that you create, and it's not going to pull in any information from your YAML. So it's not going to pull the author or anything like that. So let's hop into the article. This is QMD. It's a Quarto file. And you can see I've uh, put here title. It's not used, subtitle, author, not used. Just to remind you that it's pulling in the title from this title page tech right here. So the key things are, is this part here under your PDF. It says template partials. And that is what is going to tell Pandoc to replace its before body dot tech with yours. You'll notice I've got another one here. It's under bar title page. And the way that works is uh, Pandoc is going to look for the ones that have the same name that it's using. So it's going to use before body dot tech. But sometimes you want to reference another file 
within that. In this case, I want to reference this thing, title page tech. It's just going to keep things cleaner. Um, and so um, I need to list it here too. And then down here in uh, include and header, these are just the static things that you, you're sticking in your header. So let's, let's jump here. So the main thing is in template before body tech. So let's hop over there. So this is the folder. And let's see what's happening in this before body tech. So this is going to replace the one that Pandoc's using. Now, uh, some document classes use front matter. So if it's like a book, it's going to use front matter. But if it were like an article, it uses just title page. So I want to... Um, say if it has front, front matter do this if it doesn't do this other thing so if it has front matter i just define you know begin front matter begin title page and then include my title page there we go and if it's a, a document class that doesn't have front matter then i'll just define the title page like that and now when i go to title page dot tech this is my static title page. This is one I happen to grab off of uh, LaTeX templates. And um, let me show you a picture of what that looks like actually. Okay. Yeah, so um, it's basically this one here, this uh, so it looks, looks like that. It just came off, um, like I said, the template title pages. And if you go, um, I put, you know, if you go to this link, you can go and find the, the LaTeX code. So I just copy that. And um, it, it started with a begin title page. So I didn't need that because that's being defined in before body. I just needed the part in between begin title page and end title page. And I just grabbed that content. Basically, it's just it's just some LaTeX code to define a title page, and and that's it. Um, what's in the in header? Nothing special. Um, this particular title page, um, the person used a little logo, so that's there. And then there's a, a package used for international characters. That's it. Nothing special. And now we can go over to article.qmd, and I can render that. I'm in our studio, so I'm going to click the render button. If you're not in our studio, just, you know, if you're working from the command line uh, from the shell, you do quarto space render. There. Okay. And uh, so I, I don't have a uh, preview automatic turned on, so I have to actually go to the PDF. And there you go. You see it added that custom title page. Now it doesn't have the, you know, the name here, the names here. These are hard coded into that title tech example. So that ends the use case where you are going to use a static title page. So it's not pulling in information from your YAML. Well, what about the use case where you would like to pull in that information from the YAML? In Title Pages VLINE, we have an example of uh, developing a Pandoc template that will um, be able to reference all that information in your YAML. So when you run a Quarto document and you see that it fills in your title page with the author information, the title that's coming from your uh, YAML, when I say the YAML, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this information at the top of my Quarto file. It's up there. You can see I've got the title there, I've got the author. And when you run Quarto, if you just ran it out of the box, it's gonna create a title page using that information. But perhaps you would like to have a custom title page that still pulls in that information, but it's got the look that you want. So let's go here. And this is an example of a title page where the information is coming from the YAML. 
but um, it's it's a custom title page. Let's go over here and start looking at how you do that. When we look at the specification of the PDF, you'll see it looks exactly the same. We're not changing anything here. The difference is going to be in this template title page tech. Instead of being static, it's actually going to be a uh, it's a, going to be a template, and it's going to be using uh, Pandoc's uh, templating language to pull in the uh, information like the authors and such. I'm going to go here, and if we look at before body, that, that's no different. Like I said, the difference is in this title page here, and this is now um, a templating document. It's a combination of these uh, template language and LaTeX. And let's see what is different here. So let's go to, let's start with the, the with the title. Where is that title? Okay, here it is. <laughs> title and subtitle. Okay. So we see, to recognize this, this is our, our law tech. And look at this. This is different. This says dollar sign, title, dollar sign. What that means is that is looking at the value in the YAML, and because it has the dollar signs around it, it's saying the value of that title. So this is replacing this, what's in between the dollar signs, is replacing it with the value of the title. But I have the LaTeX here that's telling what I want to do with that. So here I want it to be large. Now let's look at the next one. Okay, now it's a little different. It says if subtitle. What's going on there? So subtitle is the reference to subtitle in the YAML. So if we go here, you're going to see if we go up here, we see it has specified subtitle. But I've got something different there. I've got it saying if. And there's no dollar signs around subtitle. In this case, its um, subtitle is going to be true or false. True if subtitle is in the YAML. False if it's not. So it's saying if there is subtitle, then do what's in between this and the end if. And if it is there, it wants to have large italics, and then um, it, now it has the dollar sign, so that's the value of the subtitle. So pretty straightforward with the title and the subtitle. Now let's go on to the authors. And now with the authors, it starts to get complicated because we might have multiple authors. And this is kind of hairy up here. So I'm going to start with this bit of code. It's going to show you a much simpler example. You'll notice that I put it in false here because I don't want this to run. I'm just demonstrating this, the code for you. So I have here for by author. So that is going, uh, it's doing a for loop through all the authors. And then as it goes through the authors, it's going to first get by author dot name. So that is, if we look here, here's our author and here's the thing with the name. So for name, I've got a name, and then I have some other things that go along with name. In this case, I could have affiliation. I could have other things. You see this one, I have email. So I could have email and affiliation here associated with the, with the name. Okay, so let's go up here. Oops, sorry, title page. Let's go through here, see what's happening. So it's going through each author and it's getting the name and uh, literal. Uh, in this case, it, we need to put the literal there to actually get the name value. Um, and the reason for that is like the names are these chunks and they can have kind of different things with them like affiliation email. And then once we, we do the name, and then we're going to go through each author affiliation. So look here. It's going to go through. So it, it took uh, the author, and here's the name. And then with Jane Doe here, Jane Doe has affiliations. And then within affiliations, we have these names. We can have multiple affiliations. So we're going to go. We're going to get that Jane Doe. And now we're doing a for loop through all the affiliations, and we're getting a superscript 
and we're putting a number on that affiliation. And then this dollar sign SEP is what we want between the affiliations. This has to do with this for loop. And it's basically, if you look here, this is what is getting me one comma two. That's what's going on there. So we're doing that for loop and then asking if the author has an email, we're going to put an asterisk there and end. Okay, so to kind of re reiterate that concept, and I can show it to you a, a lot uh, more simply, is let's, let's say if we just wanted to have a for loop, we're going to go through the authors and we're going to put a comma between e each author name. How would we do that? So we're going to copy this for that. So we just want the author name. We don't want any of this. We just want that. Okay. There we go. This is a much more simple example of that for loop. We're going to go for loop through all the authors and then getting the for the author name. Remember, we have to put the literal there um, because it's the, it's like the thing with the hyphen. Okay. And, uh, and then it's the end. So that would just give us all our authors with the, uh, with commas in between the names. So that's the basic idea here. That's um, you know how how it's combining these um, the the pandoc uh, template language with our LaTeX, and this is dynamically creating that title page information for us with the authors. On the uh, GitHub repo, you can poke around with and you know kind of walk yourself through this title page example. This is for the V line. It's it is a little more complicated, and the reason is that it's um, it needs to get this correctly, it needs to get this asterisk correctly, and then it needs getting the um, the address there, and it needs to recognize if there's an address, a department, you know, not, you know, what if you didn't have the, um, you you don't want to have extra commas there or, or not the commas in the right place so that gets a little little bit hairy and um, the other reason this one is a little more hairy is that uh, the format here is um, author 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 and uh, and then the last name so there's uh, no comma here between the last one and there. So that, that gets a little more complicated. It needs to recognize which author that it's on. Okay, so um, that's it for this. I hope that uh, that helps you understand this repository and gets you started if you want to create custom uh, title pages. Remember I showed first the static ones. You can start there. That's really straightforward. And then once you understand how to do a static one, start making a really simple Pandoc template.